Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, we are going to take a look at another fundamental scroll. This will be the single flute scroll. The single flute scroll is very similar to a fishtail scroll, but with a few little differences. The first of which is we're going to actually leave this fairly chunky on the end because we need enough material to be able to fuller down the center of this bar. So we don't really want the fishtail to spread it out super thin because when we use a fuller, like what you'll see here in a second, there will not be enough material to actually spread via the via the fullering action. Now the single fuller vein right down the center is what makes this a single flute scroll. Now if you had two fullers right next aside of one another and a ridge in between, that would be considered a double flute scroll likewise a triple flute and so on and so forth so we first we got this set up while it is cold now we're shifting over now that it's all good and set up and we get it back where it's nice and hot in we go again with a little bit heavier hammer blows and we will continue to work this out now back the length of the bar stock i will just basically hammer the fuller in to about a depth that seems to be reasonable or has a good enough impression. Now out at the end of the actual fishtail itself, I will work the fuller to the left and the right a little bit. You'll see that here in a few minutes where I'm actually tilting a little bit there. And what I'm doing is I'm actually pushing that material to the both the left and the right from my perspective. So, so you can get material to move just like using the cross peen of a hammer or a straight peen to one side or the other by directing your hammer blows and directing that fuller uh, to do the work. So as you can see, we'll just straighten that up and you can see how that single flute is looking. Now at this stage, this isn't going to do us much good. Mainly because you have to remember with scroll work, you are making a bend and so therefore the material that is bending is getting sucked up quite rapidly so it you have to do this for I would say a good six to eight inches uh, for it to be reasonable on the end to look like a really good single flute scroll there is some scroll work out there and indeed collar work that has a center flute in the center of it or a fuller groove in it and you'll see that it'll be fullered throughout the whole entire piece. That's usually done with mechanical methods and it's not going to be covered here. You wouldn't want to have to do an entire scroll bar, say something that's six, eight feet long all by hand. Uh, like this you would definitely want to set up some dies that would do the the foolering down the center of the bar for you um, Perhaps under a power hammer you could make something at the anvil as well So as you can see this progresses quite rapidly getting that fuller in but it's really just wash rinse and repeat Use the remainder of your heats when it's at a black or at a dull red heat to plainish up the trough or the fuller groove, that flute. Um, that's the time that you want to do that. So there we go. That's what I'm doing right now. Just plainishing that up. Now the next step, we're going to use a soft hammer like a rawhide mallet or a wooden hammer and we're going to go ahead and start scrolling this up. It's really important that you use a soft hammer like a wooden mallet or a rawhide mallet for the simple fact that we don't want to wreck the crispness of our edges because of the fluting. We want that to be a really nice crisp and clear transition between what is regular bar stock and you know what has that center flute you don't want to wreck all the details essentially and this goes for any of the decorative scrolls going forward any of your decorative finials that are more than just like a ribbon end or like a snub end scroll or something like that you're really going to want to focus on using softer mallets and wooden mallets things like that in order to keep those edges crisp as you scroll things around 
again, it's all about being intentional with your hammer work and making sure where your hammer blows are going, your hammer marks are being placed, is in inappropriate locations. All right, so here we go. We're gonna just keep on scrolling this up until it gets past the original fluting, and then you would just continue on with the scroll, uh, however long or however big this scroll might be for you. Uh, you would just continue on the same process. Again, it really is wash, rinse, repeat. Once you get beyond the actual fluting, you can go back to using your regular hand hammer that has a little extra mass in it that allows you to push things around a bit more readily. Uh, and that's okay then. But you definitely want to get past um, the decorative element portion of the scroll. So you can see how that's looking. Okay, so now we'll just chop this thing off right behind here. As I've said in other videos in this series, I'm adding all of these to a key ring for when I teach classes and things like that. And this is a great way of reminding yourself what you did and have an example piece to study later on, especially if you're just doing this for um, a hobby as well in your learning. It, you might want to add your own example ring. So I'll get that straightened up on the anvil, give a few taps and uh, put that on my ring. So that's it for today. I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If I earned your subscription, please do so and hit that bell for all notifications. And as always, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.